the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Good morning. And uh, welcome to this third Sunday in Advent. Uh, it is Gaudete Sunday or Rejoice Sunday. Uh, it is historically a day when uh, some of the, the penitential uh, rules of Advent are relaxed a little bit. Um, and uh, we celebrate that uh, by dressing out the church um, in pink of all colors. That's what our ancestors selected. So uh, here we are um, in uh, rose or pink or aggressive salmon, uh, depending on, on your preference for the color. Um, and uh, Gaudete just means rejoice. Uh, it is a Latin word uh, that marks this day. So welcome to church. It is, this is a consecrated place of love and of hope, of safety and forgiveness. We are all hungry, yet we are food for the hungry. We are thirsty, and yet we are living water for the thirsty. I'm really glad that you are here. You have been invited by God. Welcome, we are the church. Everything that you'll need to participate uh, in today's worship is printed in your order of service. Uh, please do respond with everything printed in bold as you are able. So let us come to God in prayer. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of power and mercy, you call us once again to celebrate the coming of your Son. Remove those things which hinder love of you, that when he comes he may find us waiting in awe and wonder for him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
This is the word of the Lord. Hear now the song of thanksgiving. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is laying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, teacher, what should we do? He said to them, collect no more than the amount prescribed for you, Soldiers also asked him, and we, what should we do? He said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusations, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them, saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I am is coming. I am not worthy to untie the throng of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So, with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of Christ.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated. Today's reflection is a part of the series that we have been doing through Advent with our sister parishes. And the reflection today is the one that Reverend Charlotte Malif has written, and I will proclaim it to you this morning. So she says, I am not sure why I volunteer to choose this to be the Sunday I would take in Advent to preach on. I mean, who really wants to be the one to call those gathering in front of them a brood of vipers, or call them out on their bad habits? However, this morning I have the distinct honor to have some hard conversations with you about our gospel and our lives, particularly around the Advent and Christmas seasons. We began our Advent conspiracy by making a commitment to worship fully this year in all we say and do. We committed to honoring God by our acts of worship. Last week, if you remember, the Reverend Ryan talked to us about spending less, considering more closely how we spend the, gift, the gifts God has given us, challenging us to spend more time considering, to spend more time considering ethical purchasing, or as I might call it, the faithful way to spend our gifts. This week, we are talking about giving more. I know that it seems counterintuitive to spend less and at the same time to give more. And you're likely asking, what are we to do? But hanging there with me, these two things are intertwined in a way that can't be separated. Let's start with looking at our gospel and what John is up to. John the Baptist is standing on the banks of the Jordan, calling anyone and everyone to baptism. Not the rite of initiation, but repent or of repentance, as Reverend Ryan reminded us last week. And those who gathered asked the same questions that we did. What are we to do? John's answer to them was to reprioritize their lives, to repent, and to return to God. Simply meaning, stop what you're doing, change direction, and refocus your attention on God and on the love and care for your neighbor. The soldiers were instructed to stop extorting money from those they held, who had held power over and to be satisfied with what they had. The tax collectors were told to stop inflating the taxes they collected, to line their own pockets, and to behave honestly and honorably. And are we doing the same thing today? The crowd. They were told to stop hoarding, keep what you need, and give the rest to those who have less. To each group, John's direction of repentance was simply about offering care and honesty to those you encountered. And perhaps that is the same message we get today in our world, the same message John offers us in the context of the Advent conspiracy tenant to give more. John didn't ask anyone to give more than they had. He didn't ask them to give up something that they needed or to make grand sacrifices. John instructed them and us to simply live our lives honestly, caring for those around us. So what does that have to do with us right now, today on December 12th, 2021? Well. What I'm about to say may sting a little, but please know it's said in love and from someone who also struggles 
with the same challenges. Firstly, consider how are we, like the soldiers, John is speaking to. How do we hold power over others? What if in 2021, our power is wealth and the way we weld it is in the purchasing of clothing made in sweatshops that hold others down? What, it is in the purchasing, what if it is in the purchasing of more needless trinkets and bubbles that no one needs or wants at the expense of child labor just to have something to give? We are all guilty of this. I am guilty of this. And she says, I actually bought Christmas balls this week, not because I needed them, but because I wanted a specific color scheme. We are all guilty of spending mindlessly. Secondly, consider how we behave like tax collectors, inflating things to gain status or power. That could be the constant refrain of, I'm so busy. At this time of year, or for that matter, any time of year, to make ourselves look and feel more important, inflating our perceived status. But the tax collectors are also dishonest. What does it say about our honesty when we spend so much money trying to keep up to the Joneses? We find ourselves in debt come January. Or what about both of these groups together? Are we like them, complicit in systematic problems that allow us to maintain and advance, all the while keeping others down? Thirdly, how are we like the people of today's gospel? Maybe this is the easiest comparison, or maybe just the least painful one. And maybe there is where this is where we might need to start, being mindful of what we need and what excess we have accumulated, making it a regular choice to purchase only what we truly need rather than what we want. If we're going to purchase gifts for others this holiday, consider gifts that are ethically sourced and are items that are wanted or needed rather than just one another ugly Christmas sweater. Treat others with care and compassion. If we are gift giving, consider relational gifts. Who doesn't want more time of you? Make space for those moments to build or tend your relationships and be honest about it. When we fall short, when we buy more Christmas balls that we don't need because we want a specific color, acknowledge and confess it. Bit by bit, these things will change not only our heart, but how we offer worship to God through our gift giving and care for others. Now here's the best part of John's tough love proclamation. What John doesn't say is give more than you have to offer, give till it hurts, or give to the point of sacrifice. John simply says, offer what extra you have. At this time of year, offering your time and energy and creativity to others can be exhausting, without a doubt. But so is combing through the malls and scoring and sourcing the Amazon website. So maybe this year, we begin a conversation about what the coming year will bring. Maybe this year, we start planning our Christmas gift, giving strategy in January. Well, maybe February. Give yourself time to recover. But spend the year moment by moment 
stopping to worship fully, redirecting our energy into creating something that will build up others and building up relationships. Maybe it's a slow progression, starting with one person or our immediate family. Spending less or at least being aware of what our money supports when we spend it and making wise, ethical, faithful decisions about what we spend it on and giving more of our time and energy and sharing our God-given gifts and talents with one another to be connected. We say give more. It's not about spending more money or buying more stuff. It's about giving more of yourself, your time, your thoughtfulness, your energy. I know that can seem overwhelming, but I can promise you, when we repent, when we stop and make these changes in our direction, not only do we refocus on each other, we refocus on God, and that is where John is pointing us to this morning and throughout his ministry. Look to Jesus. Set your eyes and heart on God. My prayer for us all at this Advent season is that we begin to change our hearts and minds to care for the least in our purchasing, to show love for others as we offer our time and talents to them, and worship God so fully we can't help but be grateful for the gift of God's Son, Jesus the Christ, and to share the gift with everyone we know. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able, and together let us profess our faith as we sing. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray that the whole world may be led into the way of righteousness, responding to, Lord, we pray in joyful hope with Lord Jesus, come soon. Gather into one body your church that is scattered in different places and separated groups. We pray for our Christian brothers and sisters here in Windsor and area, regardless of how they organize themselves or by what denominational banner they are known. Unite us that we may rejoice together that we share in your salvation. Grant sincere repentance for the faults in each that has, have held us apart. Lord, we pray in joyful hope. Lord, Lord Jesus, Lord, come Lord. soon. Move with compassion those who use the power of authority or of money to exploit others. 
as hard as it may be, we pray for dictators, tyrants, and militarists of this world whose grip on power is illegitimate, though no less real. Lead those who rule the rich nations of the world to bring relief to the poor of the world. Lord, we pray in joyful hope. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, come soon. Make us just in all our dealings with those among whom we live and those with whom we work. We pray for those who struggle to earn sufficient income from their employment to live in dignity. We pray for those who struggle to find stable employment. We pray for those businesses that struggle to pay well in a climate of price-conscious customers. Grant that we shall hold fast and honor all that is good and beautiful. Lord, we pray in joyful hope. Lord Jesus, come soon. Have mercy on refugees who have been torn from their homes to seek new lands. Especially, we pray for the displaced of Afghanistan, Sudan, and Haiti. Relieve the afflicted and sorrowful who feel that they have no place in the world and give them new hope. Lord, we pray in joyful hope. Lord Jesus, come soon. We give thanks for those who have died in faith and now rejoice in your presence. Grant them the eternal peace that passes all understanding. Lord, we pray in joyful hope. Lord Jesus, come soon. May the grace of Christ enable us to bring forth fruits worthy of repentance through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and is infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites them to this table. Let us now confess our sins, confident of God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon me. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear siblings in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I invite you to turn to each other without getting any closer to each other and bid each other the peace of Christ.
Let us pray. God of hope, renew in us the joy of your salvation and make us a living sacrifice to you for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit, and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the unity of the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. These are the gifts of God for you, the beloved people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. At this time, I invite you to be seated while I finish the preparations for the distribution of communion. Um, I will meet you at the bottom of the chancel steps in just a moment's time. Uh, there, I will invite you to come forward uh, singly or by family group, uh, whatever your piety dictates. Um, I will place communion for you on the pedestal uh, just at the top of the center aisle. 
um, and invite you to come forward and tip the, the communion wafer out of the cup and into your other hand. That seems to be the way it works best. Uh, there is a receptacle that you can place the, uh, the cup in after you've received. Um, please do make your way up the center aisle and return to your seat by the, the side aisles, except for those who are sitting in seats blocked by posts. You'll just have to <laughs> work your way back to your seat. Uh, but please do maintain your distances and uh, keep your mask on until you're at the point of receiving uh, the host.
Standing as you are able, let us pray. Merciful God, may this Eucharist free us from our sins, fill us with unending joy, and prepare us for the birthday of our Savior. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, who is Lord, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, just a few announcements to draw to your attention before uh, we conclude our worship. Uh, please do indicate your preferences for uh, Christmas worship. I know that we have lots of room under our cap, but um, I don't want you to be disappointed in case we get a last minute rush of, uh, of folks for Christmas worship. So we'll be worshiping at 7 and 11 on Christmas Eve, 10 a.m. on Christmas Day, and then the regular schedule, uh, 8 and 10 o'clock on the first, Christmas of, uh, first Sunday of Christmas. Um, it isn't uh, yet too late uh, to participate in the discussion on Tuesday evening uh, for the Advent Conspiracy Study that we've been working our way through this Advent and also hearing uh, reflected in the sermons each Sunday. Um, uh, Art invites you to join him for a walk at uh, Blue Heron Lake and Hill, uh, so meet at uh, the Little River Road um, uh, en entrance to that park. Uh, further details from Art, who's, uh, who's with us uh, now at 12.30. Uh, also, this afternoon we are doing our monthly uh, drive-through uh, food drive. Um, so if you have um, uh, food that you can spare, um, as, as Reverend Charlotte pointed out in the sermon that Gerard read so beautifully, um, if you have extra, bring it. Uh, 12 o'clock uh, here at uh, All Saints, and Owen and Mary Beth will be uh, collecting that, so look for the uh, white Nissan. Uh, if that isn't convenient, then 1 o'clock at St. Augustine of Canterbury and 2 o'clock at St. James in Roseland, uh, whichever is most convenient for you. Uh, also, uh, new unwrapped toys for, for children uh, in need uh, this Christmas will also be gratefully received and items to support uh, those who are uh, street involved this winter. So anything that would make their life just a bit more comfortable uh, would be received as well. And also you could just give cash because that's the, the most liquid and, and easiest way to move resources around, of course. Uh, at this time I invite Reverend Bev to come and bless us on our way. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. 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 Uh, please do uh, turn in your order of service and sing our... Um, recessional hymn after the dismissal. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 